Hello everybody, this is Maniac for Bricks. Allow me to take a moment to explain what's going on before we continue with this quote-unquote review. This is another exception for what I'm doing in 2017, in which earlier I said I wasn't going to review any LEGO products. However, as time has pressed on for about a week or so, I've considered how I'm going to have to go into a Dark Ages of sorts, not entirely, but there are going to be a lot of limitations when it comes to LEGO for this year. For example, I will have to cut out on hauls, I will have to cut out on collections for a bit, and have to sell off some LEGO in order to pay for other expenses. I've talked about those in some other previous videos, and even some coming up with more details there. But I considered that I will have a few exceptions here and there when it comes to reviews. For example, collectathons and collectible minifigure pack openings are exceptions to the rule because they don't just have reviews. They have a little bit more aspect to it for collecting, which is something that I like doing with LEGO other than playing with it and building with it. Now, for this video, this is a complete review. I'm not going to hide that in any capacity. But I do want to do this review for one particular reason. I don't know when the next opportunity is going to come for me to talk about these two very iconic and very, well, mostly very valuable Bionicle figures at the same time. So I feel that it would do a justice for those who have been watching the channel for a while and still want to see Bionicle content at some capacity that I talk about these two sets while I have them available now and before they go off into Bricklink and other places. So, without further ado, we have, from left to right, we have set number 8998 Toa Mata Nui. This is one of the last sets that was released with the original generation of Bionicle 1 around 2009. It has 366 pieces, it is a limited edition set, and features a very special mask, both of these very special masks, that's why they're very iconic sets. This set originally cost somewhere around $100, but you can, you can find more information about this in the description below, where it's a lot more up to date from when I'm recording this video. It is ages 8 to 16 as well. Now, the second set that we have on the right-hand side is 8697, which was released about a year or so earlier, Toa Ignica. This is ages 6 to 6, 8 to 16, it has 140 pieces, and I think this was somewhere around $30 when it was first released in the United States. Again, more information will be shown in the description below. Now, to long-time veteran, well, it's kind of the same thing, to veteran Bionicle fans who are familiar with these sets, you may be asking yourselves, isn't the one in between that you're missing in here? Well, I have talked about another rendition of Toa Mata Nui in a separate video during 2015. And I've wanted to talk about these in their own reviews as well, but didn't really get around to it until this point. So I figured this would be a better opportunity to talk about these two figures, where it actually has a fair comparison between them. The one in the middle is, for those who haven't seen it, in the cards up at the top, or link in the description below. And that figure is from the Glatorians. It's a lot closer to this size, a little different in the mask and how some of it is arranged, but it felt a little bit better to just talk about these two, which I haven't talked about yet on the channel. I've only done a time-lapse build for this one, and, well, only shown this one up in a haul or two. So, I feel like this is a lot better to talk about both of these at the same time. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the entire story of the great spirit Mata Nui. He's one of the highest objectives, in fact, the highest objective, in Bionicle lore from Generation 1. He is the one who started a lot of this, he is the one who ended a lot of it at the end, and this is probably his two best renditions. This version came around in 2008 when the Toa were trying to unlock the great spirit. This was the original form of the, well, I guess this one was really the original form of the mask that was found in Voya Nui back in 2006. It was carried through to Mare Nui in 2007. 2008, it was thrown up to Karna Nui with the Toa Nuva. And at that point, it was when it was seeing that the Great Spirit was dying. In this silvery form, this is how it appeared in 2008, because the mask and the spirit with the mask was dying. If it got to any other color after this, it would be black for Dunzo. So, you don't want that to happen. 
So at the time of this one being released, it was thrown into a great big chamber and became its own sentient being. It had its own figure to it, it has behind it its own speeder, and was helping out in that time period. At some point, it was put into the machine for recreating the Great Spirit Matanui as a giant robot, one of the biggest plot twists of Bionicle history. And at that time, Makuda got into the robot, he took Matanui and his mask form out of it, was sent to the Glatorians on a completely other planet, they reconstructed a robot there, just pretty much, you know, summing up details, and then became something like this. Now, this form of the figure, for those who aren't aware of the story, isn't quite canon. See, a lot of people do consider this to be the great robot that Matanui was supposed to be. However, in line with other figures, it's obviously out of proportion. Then again, a lot of figures have been out of proportion for quite some time, so it's kind of hard to say where the scaling properly lies. But I consider this to be as close as we can get in a Lego set form of the Great Spirit. There are a couple differences here and there versus how it looked in different media, but I'm not going to jump into all that detail. I feel like this is a good rendition just to get the action figure feel for it, not necessarily something that you could put other figures into, because... You gotta imagine, this thing was almost the size of the entire planet the whole Bionicle world was taking place on. And it was so big that that's where a lot of these figures for Bionicle came from. This is where they were operating inside of the mechanism so that you can, you know, th th each of them are just doing their own operations way long ago. This is, you have to imagine, a really big scale. Even bigger than if you put every minifigure version, or if you put every Toa and Matoran down to a minifigure size, it's still not in scale. You'd have to go much smaller than that to really get the picture for what this thing is. So, with that all out of the way, I thought this would be a good video to talk about both sets and do a little bit of compare and contrast as far as the character, not necessarily the figure, because there are much differences as far as the figure, in terms of construction, in terms of posability, in terms of complexity, that's pretty obvious. So, let's get into that right now. It's gonna be a little bit of a long one, so buckle up. So here we have Toa Ignaika, named so because the mask that he wears is called formally the Kanohi Ignaika, or Mask of Life. Hence, Ignaika, Ignite, you know, starting something new, life-giving, but also life-taking if put into the wrong hands or used by the wrong people. So, this is a very peculiar-looking vehicle-based set with the figure attached to it. The vehicle base itself is actually pretty simple. A lot of Technic parts are used and has very basic functions. It doesn't really stand up too well because it doesn't really have proper landing gear along the sides or on the back. What I do find peculiar about it is just how basic the construction is just to keep it in shape but not necessarily do much. They didn't even have this area on the back for some sort of thrust it seems but these parts on the sides don't really hold up. You do have a bit of play function with this in that you could move these wings forward. That's really minimal compared to what this thing has done in the past, or at least past vehicles have done for Bionicle, where they might actually have more of a gear-based function. Perhaps this was a way of cutting down on the complexity of the models and making it easier for kids to actually build these and play with them, but you still have another play feature with this, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. Taking a look back at our Toa figure here, this is actually a little bit on the basic side as well. Even compared to other Toa that are in the same line in 2008, this one has very minimal armor, very minimal weaponry. You know, it does have the same weapon that's used by the other Toa in the later half, and actually in the first half too, where you have these ball pieces that shoot out. It holds four of them total. And I don't know where that other one went. Oh, there it is, behind the, <laughs> behind the turntable. So, I'll put those back later. But, you're able to fit four of them in here at a time, and it does have quite the firing action. 
Now, as far as the figure itself, like I said, it's a very basic one with minimal armor and such. I feel like it should have been up a little bit more just to get a better impression for this figure in its first sentient form of three. The second one, as I mentioned before, is from another video. Now, it does have some nice pieces to it, does have some nice color scheme, does really define the figure and stand out from all the other ones in the same line. Um, I think the weapon is kind of basic, though, on his one hand, and some of these joints are a bit frail. You might actually see it a little bit close, but there are some breakage points right here on the arms, sometimes on the legs, actually a little bit back here on the arms as well. So it's not always pretty when it comes to using 2008 joints, even if they're not lime green, which is the infamous breakage one. Now you do have an action on here that you can fit another Matoran figure onto the back of this. I don't have one at present to use there, but you still have that option. It does stick out quite a bit from the figure and allows for a, bu a bunch of different figures on there and pose with them so it doesn't get in the way of the Toa's armor. Now what else you can do with this particular figure, and actually most figures if they have the proper holes in their feet, is that you can place them on two points on this rider. So you can actually position them as if they are riding it. And this actually gives a really nice pose for it, gives the vehicle a lot more meaning. It does have to balance a little bit as far as putting everything on there and even moving the feet around to make it organically you know, kind of situated, but it still looks pretty nice with everything on there. I do really like the mask. I do like the silver version of this, even though it is the less popular of the different renditions. Now, technically, we haven't, we have had the mask of life before in a set, quote unquote, because Vizon and Fenrak, a set from 2006, has actually featured that as fused with part of the mask. However, that version is a lot different from this one, so I don't really want to count it for this particular video and can't really compare it that well. So, let's move on to our other guy, the Toa Mata Nui. So here he is, Toa Mata Nui in the flesh. Now, I don't really know if it's proper to call him Toa as they do on the box because technically... It's kind of hard to say what position he's at and what it's supposed to replicate in the lore, but I'm just going to go with the best interpretation. He is the giant robot form that fights Makuta at the end. It's kind of disappointing that we don't get a Makuta-sized version, but I know that Bionicle was being cancelled, so they didn't have a lot of sets to produce in that time, and, well, we got this. I guess that's better than getting Makuta. But... You could probably just take the instructions from this one, modify as far as colors and styles go, and probably make something of a similar size to make it, you know, more lifelike. Now, for this review, I will have to bend a bunch of these joints, as you can see right now, because he's actually too tall for the bookshelf I am recording this video on. Yep, he's too big for my studio space. One of the few sets that's actually broken through. So, I'm glad that I actually have a couple of points of articulation to make this happen. For example, we have two joints that are used in the ankle, two joints that are used in the knee, and you can see how it affects the ankle as well, because there is a piston on the back. You have three joints that are in each hip. That's right. So, already on the figure's legs alone, you have a lot of articulation, and that's something that's very necessary for a figure so big and so full of pieces that you have proper ways of stabilizing it. You can see a lot more about that along the back here. You can also see through the back how some of the arm articulation works. If I just move this forward and down a bit, you can see there's two in the kind of shoulder region, and it works a lot like Takanuva did in 2008, especially using those same kinds of pieces. And I do like the way that this moves. It's very satisfying for getting it to pose in different ways and have this kind of move as if it's coming to life on its own. We'll talk about these parts in the middle. You have one point in the head, and you have mostly one in the forearm and one at the wrist. And you also do have a couple more articulation joints along the hands, because these have movable fingers and thumb that allow it to, you know, get a sense of grip for each of the weapons. Now, the weapons are kind of basic when it comes to functionality. 
For example, the sword on the right, or the sword on the left, is kind of okay in construction. It's a lot bigger than what other swords have been in the past. However, the similar piece has been used in other figures, at least for the tip of the sword. So, it's only a little bit bigger. But again, without comparing the scale of the figures, it seems pretty okay. And I think it's a fitting weapon for this, you know, version of the figure. So, other than that, we also have this very large and elaborate looking Fornax launcher. This is from the later half of Bionicle, the later, really, year of Bionicle at the end, where these were the main projectile, so it makes sense for it to be there. And you just gotta squeeze this in order for it to fly around. Basically, Thornax are small fruits that are found all over the area where the Clatorians live, and they explode on contact. These are actually very rubbery, with a band of plastic, harder plastic, in the center where the black is. I really do think this is a nice figure, and just one thing else to mention, I'm not really going to talk much about the game, but these two dials on here are supposed to be for a Glatorian Thornax launching base game. So you would try to fire these with, an, with another player that would also have the projectiles and each have their boxes and cases with them. So you would try to rack up points. The points would be deducted from the figure. So this one has a total of 10 points. You would take out each one at a time just by turning this gear. The gears are printed and they seem to work pretty nicely just for detail. Even if you didn't mind the game, this would just be a nice way of shaping the figure and just having more intricacy to it. It is a little bit lacking on the back, I will have to admit, and a lot like Takanuvan from 2008 as far as construction, where all these beams don't really have a lot of coverage. This is probably the best part as far as back detail, as long as you include these and these for articulation purposes. But, unfortunately, some people have noted an odd color scheme going throughout this model. As you saw in the last one, we saw that it was a lot of pretty basic stuff. Where you had the very obvious yellowish-orange color, you had black, you had silver, and that pretty much summed it up. But this one has a lot more going on. It has inclusions of dark bluish-gray, it has the inclusions of red and blue for pins and axles, but also the, the previous one we talked about also did that as well, so I'm not going to fault it on that. You have pearl gold integrated with only a couple pieces, some of it along the legs, some of it along the well, hip area, and then you have it in the mask itself. So it's not an actual metallic gold like Takanuva, it's a pearl gold. So a one that's more familiar with LEGO fans today when they think of gold. But you also have a lot of yellow mixed throughout here. I find it kind of surprising that they didn't really settle on one color between the yellowish orange and the yellow. And I think they just kind of combined what was available for those two colors and make it into this model. It kind of works, but in some ways it kind of stands out. If you look at only specific points along the finger, you kind of get the feeling that some of it just stands out, and it's a little more obvious where the yellow ends and where the yellowish orange begins. The black and dark bluish gray in between things does contribute to the mechanical look, however, it doesn't really contribute to the overall color scheme. For example, you have this side that has some yellow, and this side that has dark bluish gray. It's a little bit iffy, in my opinion, and I feel like it's a little bit better hidden up along the torso area. Even the silver works well in there for a lot of the pistons throughout the model, but maybe it doesn't work so well in areas down here, where you kind of want to get the feeling that this thing is supposed to be one massive model, one big thing. However, you can also interpret it in story, because you could say, well, there are a lot of different areas with different parts. They all had to integrate them together in order to make this giant robot for Matanui. So it kind of makes sense that there are different colors of things and in different sizes of pieces. Which, you know, I find plausible. I do like the way this model looks. I definitely think this is one of my all-time favorite of Bionicle models. Can't really say if it's the top, though, because of a few areas here and there. But I'll talk more about that in a separate video. So here we have every version of Mata Nui, and I decided to throw in the Clatorian version, even though I've talked about him on a few before, but I wanted to do a better comparison with him and the other figures, because, well, it just seems like a better way to close things out with all three of these. 
Now, I know that there's another version with Fizon and Fenrak. If you want to count that, you can. But I don't think it's a really fair comparison because it hardly has to talk about these figures in a sentient being. Um, and the mask itself actually doesn't have a lot of comparison to these as far as shape goes. So, let's go on with these. I'll have to say, each of these have their own parts that really work together. But, I don't know if there's really a good way to put all three of them together <laughs> to make the best of the best. I would have to say it would take elements from one to the other to really make things work. Now, what I like best about this one is the complexity. This is LEGO's thank you to all the fans who have been there with Bionicle for all of, all of ten years at that point and really made the theme one of their most successful and one of their most long-running. Because at that time, Star Wars was only ahead by a year or two, and there weren't really other themes unless you count generically castle, generically space. But even those have all their different sub-themes in them that don't really run for much time. As an independent property, this was really successful for LEGO. This was very influential for LEGO. And this was a proper way to send things off in a buildable set. Granted, it's not perfect. I still see a lot of gaps in the model. You can even see one right here in the legs. But that's a little bit of picky detail. And I still think for something that it was built, for, you know, made to be buildable by kids, this was pretty darn good. Now, as far as any resale value, most people will actually get the most value out of this set with the mask. Because, well, it's very collectible. This is what I mean by it being a nice send-off and a nice thank you. This seems to me more like a ceremonial version of the Mask of Life. Granted, it's supposed to be the proper version, but for me, it has like a little bit more of this merit, like it's supposed to be a trophy of its accomplishments all these years. That also goes into how I value the masks themselves, and I think that this one actually is my favorite of the Masks of Life. This may be a little bit less popular, but it's still a pretty darn cool version in my opinion. Now, some people may see gold as being a more valued thing than silver, but I've seen in some instances, uh, outside of Bionicle and outside of LEGO itself, in all different sorts of media, silver, or its close cousin platinum, is regarded as a more collectible and valued thing. For example, the... GameCube, Nintendo GameCube, has no gold version, not a platinum gold, or not a um, metallic gold or a pearl gold, but it does have a platinum version, um, which is regarded as a uh, limited edition. I remember that because when I got it originally, that is what it said across the box, and it is considered a more valuable thing because of that color. There was a yellowish orange version of the GameCube, but I don't think it's as valuable as that. Or if it is, it's because it's region locked or something like that. So, color-wise, it's marked on the box itself. Nintendo considered this a more valued color. I've even seen it, I think, in Minecraft. Gold is a nice color to have, a nice resource, but it doesn't really do a lot. Like, when you apply it to different tools, it doesn't always last that long. It's kind of a nice looking thing. But when you use something more like iron or more silvery colored object to meld tools with, you get a lot more life out of them. You get a lot more worth out of them. And for this one, it almost has that feeling of age. Even the mask itself representing the fact that the mask and the figure behind it is dying, it does have this sense of how much Bionicle has carried, how much it's influenced. And with that, carry some sort of, you know, age and class to it, in my opinion. This one, I just really don't like the mask at all. Don't get me, <laughs> don't get me started while I'm going. Basically, it's a smaller version of either of these two masks that came in between, you know, this set was made, this set was made, then this set was made. This was not the one you want to get. Many, many people don't really like this one or value it that much. I've actually had a duplicate set another copy of this one, and the back of it, and even some parts in the front, were actually folded inward and cracked. So it's not always that stable when it comes to handling, 
and I try to be a little bit careful with this one. But it was made for a smaller head, which is why it's a smaller mask. Um, you could say it kind of gives it a difference of scale when it comes to the pieces. Like, if this is supposed to be in scale with this, then it would actually make these pieces a lot larger than what these are. But, I digress. Now, one thing I do like about this set is the color scheme. This actually works out to be a better color scheme than the others, in my opinion. The black and yellowish gold are very good, just on their own, and a little bit of accent of silver is not too bad either. Now, in comparison to this one, which actually has a more similar construction to it, this one has a lot of silver and a lot of black, but not a lot of yellowish gold, and that's why I don't really think it's that great as far as the look for the model, and also with the lack of actual content and beef to it. This one even has more beef to it along the legs, probably the best because of how all the pieces are integrated from the hips downward. And I also like the piece that's used towards the front. The side arms, you know, these little pieces on the uh, on the sides are okay, but depending on the posability, it's going to be very interfering. But I also like just how the black. Look at it from all different angles, and you'll see that the black is very well integrated with the yellowish orange. And that's because it's not trying to stand out too much, but, sit, but it also kind of sits back a little bit. A lot of it's shown back here, and even in some of these joints, and even along the arms, probably the most prominently along the front, and even here. So, it does have a nice way of just balancing between them. Even though the majority of this still has yellowish-orange, it still works as a nice backup color. And for a lot of Bionicle figures, that's what I like to see, is that the, the secondary color just kind of, you know, works in between what the primary color does. And either halfway or a little bit less than halfway of how much the primary dominates the set. Overall, I'm really happy with the opportunity to obtain these figures. I know times are changing and I will have to let them go for a bit. And I don't really know when they're going to come back into my LEGO collection. But when they do, I will welcome them with open arms. They are great sets and great memories from Bionicle. Uh, nice to follow along with many years. And I'm always happy to reminisce those with fellow Bionicle fans of any age and of any knowledge. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you guys liked best about these sets. Did you like any particular set the best? And do you like any of the particular masks the best? We'll see you next time with more LEGO videos. Thank you for joining me with this review. I hope I don't make too, more, <laughs> too many more exceptions in this year when it comes to LEGO reviews, but I'm really happy to at least make this send-off for Bionicle. Even though this is supposed to be for Generation 1, this was nice for at least the Generation 2 send-off because this was probably the most that Lego could offer in terms of, you know, thank you in a, a bunch of particular Lego sets. These are representing a figure that's been with us since 2001 and was a main goal since then. And it was very nice to learn a lot about this figure over time and especially towards the end of Generation 1. So, <laughs> this was a very good experience for me and... I'm glad to have at least enjoyed the sets in person. I will still probably talk about these sets at another time in some other videos, but not with them in hand. I'll probably just have some other stock photos that are put in there. But I, I at least went through these to get some opinion and get some, you know, get some experience with it. So thank you again very much. It, thanks to you for, you know, allowing me to pursue more of my Bionicle collection, at least for some time and uh, to go through these. So, I'm very sorry this is a long video, but I wanted to put as much time and thought and effort into this as I could, and uh, we'll see you next time.